Hello guys and welcome to a new Stellar Vision 2 video today by me Balkan. In this one I have for you a preview of the 4th Armoured Division, a new division available in the upcoming Tribute to Normandy 44 DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC so a big thanks to them. Also please remember that this was recorded on a preview build so what you see may be subject to change. If you'd like to read the description on the right hand side feel free to pause the video and take a look but we're going to be jumping straight on in. Now I did hold off on doing previews on these new divisions mainly because the DLC still had some changes to be made. Uh, they are now implemented, so we can go ahead and go through them all uh, more accurately. So let's jump into the recon tab and start having a look. So first of all, we've got the Bantam, which replaces the 50 cow Jeep. It does have armor, which is kind of nice, um, but three, six, and nine available at forced one vet. Then we have the recon. They are available in a few different transports. They have access to the M20 and the M3 Scouts. These are the two notable ones, particularly the M20, because it's basically a fast armored 50 cal vehicle. Pretty cool. Then we have the Scouts. Uh, these are available in the M3 Scout only, not the M20. Then we have the Ammo Pioneers. Uh, so this is a unit that's carried over from Normandy 44. They've got five M1 carbines, some TNT and bazookas available in A and B at three and six availability can be brought in with the WC25 Jeeps if you want. And there's the Cavalry Scouts. These guys are your standard six-man squad with bazooka smoke grenades. We've seen these guys before. Can be brought in with the M3A1 Half Track. Then we've got the M5A1 Recon. 5, 10, 15 available. And then three cards of M8s. So quite a lot of cards of M8s in this one for sure, but you're going to be certainly making a lot of use of them alongside your Hellcats, which we'll be getting to later on. In the infantry tab, things are relatively simple, uh, pretty standard American infantry. We've got uh, the armored rifles and the M3 half tracks and the M3A1s. You can also bring the GMC HMG, but this thing's never really that useful. Um, just because it doesn't have any armor, it gets killed quickly. But 9, 18, 27 availability on armored rifles. Uh, then we have the armored rifle leader with M1 carbines and Thompsons. It has a Willy Pete. I prefer my leaders to either have smoke or uh, HE grenades. There's two cards available of armored rifles with BARs. 9, 18, and 27 availability. And then there's the engineer leader. Then we have the standard engineers, which have uh, 6, 12, and 18 availability, which I believe is higher than standard. Usually it's like 5, 10, and then 15. So that's a little bit better than usual, which means you can probably up that your engineers for free here. And uh, you do get the ability to bring them in with the M3A1 half track, which is quite abundant in this division, 65 available. Uh, then we have the armored LMG rifles available in A and B, 9 available in A, 18 available in B. Availability on those again very high, uh, so you probably want to take advantage of veterancy with those. Actually in this case maybe not because the vet curve is not very good. And then we have the rifles late which come with the two BARs, two machine guns definitely makes a big difference, or well, in this case automatic rifle. Uh, they don't have any crazy transports, but can be brought in with the GMC HMG if you want to. And then there's a the rifle leader, which comes with that sniper and bazooka combo. In the tank tab, we have Stuart leaders, which are pretty standard. Nothing crazy about them, but you might want to supplement some leaders in the tank tab instead of in the infantry tab. And those sort of cheap leader tanks are often a good way to do that. There's three cards available of the M5A1 Stuarts though. 8, 16, and 24 available. Imagine you yeah, put all three in phase C. That is definitely a video to be made right there. Then we have the M8 Cavalry. Also 8, 16, 24 availability. The fact you get eight of these on a card in phase A is just asking for M8 spam, especially considering the amount you get in the recon tab. But the M4 here, is available leader two four and six availability at one vet got three cards of standard m4s 6 12 18 availability 
Then we've got the M475, which is the M4 with more armor. So you get it's like for 10 more points, you basically get 20 more armor, which is actually a pretty nice upgrade. There's also the leader variant of those, which uh, is pretty cool. Got a unique paint job. Then we have the M4A375. This is slightly less armor than the M475. The M4A3 it has a better engine, so it goes slightly faster. And it costs the same. Then we have the M4A1 Rhino. These are only available in Phase A. 120 milliliters frontal armor. Very, very nice indeed. Then there's a card of the M4A176s. It's available in B and C. And uh, the M4A1 Leader, which is only available in Phase B. Moving over to supports, we've got the Flamethrower. Uh, they can be brought in with a ton of transports. Uh, so you can get like all the WC50, WC25 variants. You've got the half-track variants. You've got the GMCs in there. You can bring them in in the Amphibious 4 GPAs as well. There's the Browning machine gun. Uh, also available to come in with one of these 50 cal half-tracks potentially. There's the 30 cal. Again, can be brought in with a 50 cal half-track. Uh, then we've got the M8 Scots. These are available in A, B, and C. 5, 10, 15 availability. Uh, the M8 Command Vehicles. Uh, these aren't commanders. They are leaders. Uh, but available too in A and 4 in B. If you need to supplement leaders, this is another way you, that you can do it in your support tab. Especially since the support tab is pretty cheap. Then 50 cows available in Phase A, B, and C. 4, 8, and 12 availability, but can't come in with a 50 cal half track. That would be a nasty combination. And we got the two um, cards of GMC supplies available in A, B, and C. Uh, then we got the M2 half track supply, which is just armored version, costs the same. And then there's the new M30 cargo, which is 15,000 supply available in A, B, and C. Costs 10 points more, but for armor and extra supply. Can't really go wrong. Then there's the M4105, which is your HE variant of the M4105 with a 105mm gun with 4.1 damage. Pretty nice for that 2000 meter range HE. 2, 4, 8 availability. And then for the M4A3105, you got 2, 4, 8 availability. So the difference between these, again, is a little bit of armor. And then also the M4A3 variant has the heat round. So this one is better armored but doesn't have heat. And this one is worse armored but does have heat. Then we've got the commanders. The commanders in this one are the infantry commander, the M20 commander, and Abrams, who has his special Thunderbolt um, insignia on the side. Cool. You can see the 4th Armoured logo there as well. Very nice. Alright, let's move into the anti-tank. This one's pretty simple. Bazookas. 6, 12, 18 availability. And they can be brought in, again, with 50 cal half-tracks. There is 3 cards of M1 guns. These only have AP shells. Nothing else. No HE, no, a no APCR. Again, transports include the M3A1. We're also going to see the M4 high-speed tractor as well in there and then we have the Hellcats of course we have the Hellcats so this was the star of the show in Normandy 44 it was very strong in Normandy 44 but the Hellcat not as strong in Steel Division 2 uh, mainly because there's a lot more tar or a lot more threats to this vehicle in Steel Division 2 than there was in Steel Division Normandy 44. Just like the sheer amount of units in comparison to Normandy 44 makes these a lot harder to use because previously this was like such a larger force modifier than it is in this game. Um, but still a very solid tank and its APCR is certainly punching at a distance. So you will have to be still careful of these. But three available in A, six in B and nine in C. The big scary thing about these is they're super fast very easy to maneuver. 
Then we have the M16 MGMCs and M15 CGMCs. Um, the M16 is available in 3, 6 and 9 in A, B and C. And then the CGMC is 2, 4 and 8 in A, B and C. Um, the activation cost is pretty high, but uh, yeah, CGMC will probably be the choice there. In the artillery tab, spotters are available, the two-man recon teams with radio. Again, can be brought in with the recon um, vehicles there, which is nice. Then there's three cards of 60mm mortars available in A, B and C, 8, 14 and 20 availability. Artillery commanders can also be brought in as a supplement to your infantry or tank tab. 81mm radio mortars available in A, B and C. Six cards of M7 HMCs. That's a lot of priests. They come in two, four, and six availability. Three cards of 81mm mortars. So if you like a bit of a radio mortar spam, this could certainly be up your alley. Then there's two cards of M1 155s available in A, B, and C. One in A, two in B, four in C. Then we have the M12 GMC. A big chonker. This thing is a 155 mil on tracks. Available in A, 2 in B, 3 in C. And finally, there is one card of the M4A1 OP, the Observer, with the 155 millimeter off map. So there you go. Moving on to the air tap. Rosie makes a return. Rosie the Rocketeer. Now, apparently, I haven't had a chance to try it out myself, but Gonzo told me that this thing is actually good now. In Steel Division Normandy 44, it was a bit of a meme because it basically did no damage. It was more or less just a <laughs> low availability recon plane. <laughs> In this, it is actually apparently pretty naughty because it's got six bazookas. Um, like, it is six bazookas. But in bazookas in this particular game are much stronger on the aircraft than they were in Normandy 44. So what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say, is this thing actually does damage now. That being said, would you rather have this over something else in the air tab? <laughs> Questionable. And we have the B-26B Marauders, the strafing ones. They have a lot of 50 cals on them. Uh, not only on the front, but also on their turrets. Two at the back, two on the top. One in the front, four on the sides. Um, then we've got four, two, four, and eight availability in phase C. We've got F5As, which are your recon lightnings, two, four, six availability. Marauders with 45 kilogram bombs, you get 20 of them. 2, 4, 7 availability on these. 120.1 comes with 6 227 kilogram bombs, 2, 4, 6 availability. Uh, then we have the P47 with the 227 kilogram bombs, 3 available in A, 4 in B, and 6 in C. P47, 3 in A, 6 in B, 9 in C. Then the Black Widow, which only comes in phase C, but does get the HVAR 127 millimeter rockets which are pretty effective at taking out armor so this is going to be a pretty nasty late game anti-armor option there's also the p47d with napalm bombs which is actually pretty good against armor um, and of course will destroy any infantry and support weapons but yeah against armor particularly big armor like um stuff that they move slowly elephants king tigers very very good actually and then we have the P-47D with the big bombs of 454 kilogram bombs. Um, one available in A, two in B, and four in C. And then P-47s with those HVAR rockets. These are actually probably going to be a better choice than the Black Widow in most cases, just because you get more rockets, which means more chances to hit, which means more chances to kill. Because each rocket does three damage, so you need, you know, at least... Four rockets to hit to kill a medium tank in one pass and then you need five to hit to kill a heavy tank in one pass 
That's basically how it works. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's all of the units available in this division. So let's just go ahead and quick throw together a quick deck. Um, this will no, by no means be uh, like the viable solution, but I'm just going to be chucking in a lot of the, the cool new stuff and then we'll try and fill it out with some of the other stuff. So we'll do cavalry scouts in half tracks. These ammo and pioneers will keep in phase A. We probably want to bring in some M8s. That will do. Then in the infantry tab, I'm thinking probably want to bring in the rifles late. Um, I don't know if I want to bring in this GMC. Maybe not in the early game. Let's go ahead and take them out of that and put them in phase A. And then we can put one in phase B with the GMC or even in phase C with the GMC HMG. Yeah. Uh, but then these armored rifles BAR definitely going to be a better option than the standard armored rifles. I think bringing those in with a half track is a good idea. It is going to make this a quite expensive tab though if you do do this. But I think making good use of the 50 cal half tracks is going to be really important. Um, for these engineers, we'll just keep them in half tracks. How many cards of these do we get? We do get two cards, so we can do something like this. So we'll have close range infantry, long range infantry, some with transport, some without. Then we've got uh, phase B, close range, long range, and then phase C. Probably just want to add um, some more units for long range. I might just do this instead, actually. We bring those and move these to C. Something like that. Might be a little bit light in phase A, but we don't have a leader in here. Um, I'm probably going to use leaders from either the tank tab or the support tab. We definitely want the rhinos. I'm kind of tempted to two vet rhinos in phase A. And in phase B, we'll definitely bring up vetted M4A176s. Other than that, the M475s are going to be a good choice. The vet curve on these isn't great. So I might just bring in four of them in phase A. And then probably want to bring these so we can bring those in phase C or B, sorry. I might shift these to phase C then. They make cabs in phase A. Kind of a choice that would be quite nice, especially since they give good 50 cal support. And we'll go with a card of the M4A375s in phase B. And we'll leave it at that for the time being. I will definitely bring in the new Ace almost a certainty and then for our supply I'm probably going to come back to it so let's think do I need flamethrowers they'd probably be helpful in this deck but I think the Scots also a good idea so I might throw that in it's always really annoying to deal with Scots in phase A so I will take advantage of that and um, we'll throw some of these in phase B and I think I will come back to this tab because it's quite an expensive tab. Then we have AT guns. We'll definitely want AT guns in phase A. I usually up that mine. Uh, we definitely want to bring in Hellcats. I don't think you need Hellcats in phase A. Actually, maybe we do. Maybe I do a phase A Hellcat. And then like a phase C Hellcat. Or even a phase B Hellcat because... I've got the 76s coming in C. I think AT guns are still going to be really important here. For the anti-air, I'm thinking we just do something like this. And then for artillery, we do have a lot of artillery potential here. 
Radio mortars are always going to be a good choice. And these radio mortars in particular are very good on the Americans because you get 60 HG shells. Very nice. Very nice indeed. So I'm going to do artillery leader in phase A. And I'm also going to bring in these in phase A in the support tab. I am going to have, definitely have to shift things around now that I look at this. We'll bring in Rosie for the memes. And other than that, probably just some P-47s. See, I'm not convinced that like all of this heavy artillery is going to be super good. Like these mortars will be more than enough. I'm even tempted to just go phase A mortars, phase B mortars, and then maybe have some like 155s in phase C or something would be like my go-to. Something like this. I don't know if this maybe could be a good choice as well. Or even we could do something like this. That could also be a good choice. Because the priest is actually okay. Like it's got six round per minute rate of fire. For a 105 it's not too bad. So we need the supply. So I'm trying to think like where you'd cut down. Like here would be the, the main place where you wouldn't actually take the Bantams. I don't think you'd even take the Ammo and Pioneers usually just because both of these cards are incredibly available. Availability inefficient. Um, but in this case I'm actually just going to take out the Recon M8 since I have the M8s in the... Actually no, we'll keep the Recon ones. They're, they're more important than the Tank Tab ones. And then we can add some supply in here in Phase B. That'll do. Since these are 15,000 supply vehicles, I think that'll be more than enough. And that, guys, is the fourth armoured. Pretty interesting deck, to be honest. It's a fast and furious American deck, which has some pretty decent artillery support if you bring it. I mean, there is also, like I said, the potential for pretty strong aircraft, considering how much options you have here in the air tab. The fact you only have four cards is kind of scary but the way you can build this deck is going to vary quite a bit you are definitely going to want to have this much infantry i think uh, and then it's just a matter of like where do you put your other units there are units that i would probably switch out in a realistic scenario like i probably wouldn't have the bantam and the ammo pioneers i would change like the ammo pioneers to uh, something else like the scouts in m20s or something like that or even just like recon in m20s and then only have four cards in the recon tab that would free up a couple of points and then you could have an extra aircraft with maybe um late game um rocket thunderbolts or black widow um one of the two i think would be a good choice instead um you could also maybe free up some stuff in the anti-tank tab if you didn't want so many at guns but yeah i think overall this this would still work it's not optimal by any means but yeah that's an overall look at the fourth armor and we got all the new stuff in here so i'll definitely give this a go as it is um, in the future. So that is it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this look at the fourth armoured. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.